Welcome to Drunk Bible Study. This show's mission is to read every single word of the greatest story ever told. A warning to our listeners, the hosts of this show are sinners, but they're doing their best. There will be drinking and there may be some swears. They did say they'd try to keep it clean, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I'm Emily, and this is Drunk Bible Study, where my good friends Jason Dedeker teach me a born and raised atheist all about the Bible. And we're back. Every time I take a week off, I'm always like, how do I do the show? How do I start the show? What's happening? Uh, no, you're perfect. <laughs> perfect every time. That was beautiful. Oh, wow. So happy Thanks. to be back. So happy to be here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gosh. it's I'm always sad when we miss it. Because, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's like I miss out on that, the wisdom and movie casting Yes. Yes. And sometimes horror and disappointment, all those things. Yeah, I feel like my heart builds up a little bit of a patina Mm. where Mm. I'm just like a little Mm -hmm. bit numbed out to like the violence and the misogyny and the boredom and the weirdness and all these things at once. And then we take a break and like that patina breaks down and then I come back and I'm like, ugh. (laughs) So you want that is what you're saying? You like need it. I think I need it. It's like building a good callus. Yeah, you know, it's like a callus. Sure. So I can keep yeah. digging yeah. in the garden of garbage grapes. <laughs> I just keep thinking that, what, is this now eight episodes till the New Testament? Or are we on seven? Like, I'm going to do a mental countdown every single episode that we do. Yeah, okay. Let's Let's go check. Let's see here. This will be, after this, uh-huh. we'll have seven more. Wow. It's All just right. like Lucky, seven, six, yes. five. It's like we're counting right. down to the new year. It's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like yeah. a very long countdown. If you imagine we counted <laughs> down to the new year once a week instead of once a minute or second or what yeah. do we do for New Year's? Seconds. That's the one. We seconds. counted seconds. And we also, we pop champagne and we kiss somebody. So oh. are those, do those traditions still hold with a whole New Testament? Yes. You know what? I think we yeah. should get dressed yeah. up. And have it like a little bit of an event. You're right. You know, for the end of this book, the end of this giant half of this book. Yeah. I think that would be fun. Okay, so put on our finest evening wear. There you go. Our top hats and cravats. I think all of you out there should as well. Some bubbly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, as we get closer to that, let's start figuring out what that virtual online live event is going to look like and plan it. Because that sounds great. Yeah, I would... I think that would be fun. It was fun yeah. doing our little giveaway. Maybe we could mm-hmm, figure something mm-hmm. out similar that to was that. Fun. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Fun. Sweet. Percolate. Sweet. Yeah. I love that. Alrighty. Does anybody at all remember? <laughs> I'm trying oh, to think. Oh, dear. Uh, was to, more some of building, building the temple? Yeah. Sure. More mm-hmm. of building the temple. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jace, you got you gonna give us any hints about what happened last time? Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. I just I just looked back a, a brief oh. chapter to see. Okay. We finished building the temple and then we had that big week-long music festival right. to celebrate it, remember? And they did the sacrifices inside the temple, mm. but it all filled up with smoke because right. they didn't have good ventilation, or right. Yahweh was there, one of the two. Yeah. Maybe both. Maybe and so then they did the rest of the sacrifices outside in the square, and they had all the bands perform, all the musicians and everything. And then I think we ended with like the final thing, like the final dedication of the temple. Oh yeah, Solomon was up on a stage oh, doing yeah. a big prayer, right? About how yeah, did he sing? Yeah. Maybe they sang. Maybe the people sang. Uh-huh. Right. He did that big prayer where he was talking about, like you know Yahweh, when we make our mistakes and stuff, like. If they come to pray at this temple, then please listen to them. You know, like this is this is. Oh the yeah, place. he did that thing where he's like, and if I don't know, maybe in the future, who knows what's going to happen? If like the people get carried off to right, some land, right, right. we'll call it Zabalon, maybe <laughs> like Zabalon. that happens. And if <laughs> yeah, they yeah. say they're really sorry, then you'll forgive them, right? Right. There was a little bit of that retconning in there. Yeah, yeah, that sounds mm-hmm. plausible. Mm-hmm. Plausible for sure. <laughs> what what are you two drinking today? 
oh, I'm just, I'm polishing off the last of the Mossy Rock Irish stout that I had left over from, I was going to say Ireland Day. <laughs> you know, ago. Ireland Day. That It's essentially how we celebrate St. Patty's Day in the U.S. <laughs> Wait a minute. Right. Wait, did you like open a can of beer and then now you're having it no. 10 days Gross. later? I had Gross. a six pack. Oh, okay, good. Good Lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't know because oh like she goodness. would. You what do you know? take me for? I would, honestly, the way I nurse that's, drinks, I would yeah. I would what stretch I mean. one beer out to 10 days if I had to. So if I ever yeah. was on a desert island and only had one beer, I could make it last the whole time. Wow, there you go. <laughs> uh, and I'm having a spot-on IPA oh, cute. by Rubens Brews. And I mostly got it because the can is so cute and springtimey. And yeah. I'm just really trying to lean into the springtime vibes. Mm. I know that it's been really rainy in LA, but it's actually yep. like a lovely sunny day here in Seattle. And I'm just really, really enjoying the springtime vibes. It's like an Easter oh, beer. It's yeah. yeah, an Easter beer. You're right. Yeah, there you go. How about you, Em? What are you drinking today? I'm drinking a Paloma. I have this uh, grapefruit soda. And so I actually did like squeeze some fresh grapefruit and then also some lime and some tequila and just a touch of uh, agave as well. And it's really good. That's awesome. Talk about a nice springtime drink. Oh, yes. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Shall we, shall we get this party started? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So today we are continuing on to find out what Solomon does after hosting this big music festival and giving this epic prayer in front of everybody. Now comes the hangover. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. Poor. There you go. Yeah. So this is Second Chronicles chapters 8 through 11. And then we will be getting some wisdom from the book of Proverbs chapter 12. As we get started, we want to remind everyone to read responsibly and drink responsibly. You can drink along with us, or you can listen to us while you're in the car. But please do not do both at the same time. And with that, it's Second Chronicles, Chapter 8. Music always reminds me how much swagger that Michael B. Jordan as Solomon should oh, have yeah, in all of this. So just really keep that in mind as we go here. Yes. It's great. Love yes. it. Second Chronicles chapter 8. It happened at the end of 20 years in which Solomon had built the house of Yahweh and his own house oh. that the cities which Huram had given to Solomon, Solomon built them and caused the children of Israel to dwell there. Solomon went to Hamath Zobah and prevailed against it. He built Tadmor in the wilderness, just a Tadmor, and, <laughs> Cute. and all the store cities, which he built in Hamath. Like I'm imagining Costco's or something, like <laughs> Sam's Clubs. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I was imagining uh, like the Venetian, like the canals, the shops of the canals in mm, Vegas, where oh, yeah. it's a city, but it's all just shops. Mm, okay. Yeah, 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 we were just there. It was it was mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> well, I remember when we were reading Second Kings, we talked about it seemed like King Solomon had these big like outlet malls built, yes. which are also kind of like store cities. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it really could be any of these. True. Also, he built Beth Horon the upper and Beth Horon the lower, fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars, and Baaloth, and all the store cities that Solomon had, and all the cities for his chariots and the cities for his horsemen. Right. Yes, he That's loved the, this. Wait, horse the cities? used car dealerships are. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, okay. he Cute. loved this. The chariot cities and horse cities, yeah. Yeah. And all that Solomon desired to build for his pleasure in Jerusalem and in Lebanon and in all the land of his dominion. As for all the people who were left of the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, who were not of Israel, of their children who were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel didn't consume, of them did Solomon raise a levy of bond servants to this day, it's so convenient. Just slaves. Slaves are us. 
Oh. Slaves are us for the taken. Jeez. Sorry, yeah. I, I got too caught up in the floweriness of the language that I missed the meaning. And yeah, okay, cool. Oh, a, a levy of bond servants. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no servants for his work, but they were men of war and chief of his captains and rulers of his chariots and of his horsemen. These were the chief officers of King Solomon, even 250 who ruled over the people. That's Solomon, a lot of dudes. <laughs> so I just want to quickly from the message here. Uh, he says, they were also the project managers. Oh, mm. good. <laughs> and I just like that he really brought it into modern terms here. Yes, good. Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David to the house that he had built for her. For he said, my wife shall not dwell My wife. in the house of David, king of Israel, because the places are holy, whereunto the ark of Yahweh has come. Wait, what? Hold on. Wait, yeah. Okay, so he brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David to the house that he had built for her. For he said, my wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, because the places are holy. So is it like my wife is a dirty, dirty, dirty trash baby and cannot be in a holy place? Well, she is. Maybe she's not an Israelite. Well, yeah, she's Egyptian. Right. She's the daughter of Pharaoh. So I think it would be dangerous. She would be more at more risk of getting electrocuted by Got it. God the Ark, I assume. So Does the message yeah. have an interesting translation? No. He just says, Because my wife cannot live in the house of King David of Israel, for the areas in which the chest of God has entered are sacred. Is that kind of the Talking same? about the Ark? Yeah, maybe yeah. that was the party line, but really he was like, this shit is dangerous. I'm not going to have my wife hanging out right. here. <laughs> I mean, that's wise, yeah. all okay. things considered, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Did you, like, he's like, did you Did you guys all see what happened to <laughs> Utsu or whatever Utsu? his name was? I will not Utsa? have exploding wife. I draw <laughs> no. the line there. Yeah. Did that happen? When did that happen? That was like way when at they the were beginning. Bringing the, when David was bringing the Ark yeah. back okay. was when that happened. Okay. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings to Yahweh on the altar of Yahweh, which he had built before the porch. <laughs> Good. Even most important, as the duty of every day required, offering according to the commandment of Moses on the Sabbaths and on the new moons and on the set feasts three times in the year, even in the Feast of Unleavened Bread mm. and in the Feast of Weeks and in the Feast of Tents. So that, just to clarify there, the unraised bread is Passover. The weeks is Pentecost mm. and the tent booth tents, whatever, that's a suck it. Suck it, right. Yeah. He appointed, according to the ordinance of David his father, the divisions of the priests to their service, and the Levites to their offices, to praise and to minister before the priests, as the duty of every day required, the doorkeepers also by their divisions at every gate, for so had David the man of God commanded. They didn't depart from the commandment of the king to the priests and Levites concerning any matter or concerning the treasures. Can I just now, ask, like, who thought that this would make great reading content? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think anyone thought it was great reading okay. content. Again, so much of this is just like records. It's just yeah. in the filing cabinet. And someone is like, sure, like, let's put this into... We got to pat it out somehow. Let's put this into the Bible that's going to be the most famous book on the planet. Because we really, (laughs) you know, it's not a, it's not a compelling yarn. I'm just going to say. It's funny too, because that decision was made many times. Yeah. Where it was like decided first to, yeah, let's write this down and have this be part of, you know, some collection of manuscripts. And then later someone was sorting through those being like, which do we keep? Oh, this one? Yeah, definitely going to keep this one. And then later, you know, King James is going, okay, which ones do I think should stay in this book? This one? Oh, totally. Love this one. So good. And that that's just perpetuated for all these hundreds of years leading up to when he did that. I think they didn't write it either, or read it either. Like, (laughs) all of those people out there. (laughs) No one in the history of the world has read it. No one has read it, (laughs) except for us, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Now, all the work of Solomon was prepared to the day of the foundation of the house of Yahweh and until it was finished. So the house of Yahweh was completed. Then went Solomon to Ezion Geber and to Eloth on the seashore in the land of Edom. Huram sent him by the hands of his servants ships and servants who had knowledge of the sea. And they came with the servants of Solomon to Ophir. 
and fetched from there 450 talents of gold and brought them to King Solomon. Lovely. Oh, is this when he's going to make all his commemorative shields out of those? Ooh, that could be fun. Ooh. That would be fun. Yes, it would be. And that's it. That's chapter eight. Wow. You, you really cruised through that. It's time, yeah. Okay. Shall we move on to nine? Mm-hmm. When the Queen of Sheba... Ooh, she back. She's back. Sheba, she oh, back. Right, who's who's playing this again? Beyonce? Okay, let me check. Let me check. This is... Uh, no, Beyonce no. is Ashra. <laughs> I was going to say Angela Lansbury, and I was like, no, that's not right. it's Angela Bassett. <laughs> that's the Wait, one. is Thank it Angela you. Bassett? That's kind of awkward. We could either have her do it, or we could recast her. It's only awkward because Michael B. Jordan is like, it, like it, they're almost, they're not contemporary, and, and Angela Bassett was the mom of his rival in Wakanda Forever. But who cares? So it's kind of like she's his mom. No, okay. it's great. It's great. It's, it's fine. Okay. That's a different she's universe. Older, yeah, that's true. Okay. She's just a beautiful woman, older woman. We don't exist in the Marvel universe. This is fine. Yeah, we're not in the Marvel universe. Some people will be so into it. Okay. Some people will be too into it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Okay. I stand corrected. No, she's a beautiful, powerful woman. She's the Queen of Sheba. She's a big deal in her own right, you know? Well, but hold on, though, because we recast Solomon. No. For this. No? Is he the same? Is it still Michael B. Jordan? Yeah. Yes. We we no. recast some of the other characters for the reboot, but by How popular demand, recast? we kept Michael B. Jordan. Exactly. That's true. That's true. <laughs> exactly. How can you recast? It, yeah, it's like... No, you you can't. Okay. okay, so this is just how it's going to be. When the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem. I bet she did. <laughs> with a very great train and camels that bore spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she talked with him of all that was in her heart. Solomon told her all her questions, and there was not anything hid from Solomon which he didn't tell her. Wait, when the Queen of hold, Sheba... Hold on, sorry. Well, nothing was hid from Solomon which he didn't tell her. Uh, I don't know. Like, so the message... He told her everything, something. Well, the message clarifies that Solomon answered everything she put to him and nothing yeah. stumped him. Hmm. Okay. So like the answers were given to him by Yahweh or, you know, he, he, he got them. You got them all figured Good out. Good job. <laughs> but I wonder, but what kind of questions could she possibly be asked? Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming trivia. She's probably very interested in who he is. Like one train leaves Detroit <laughs> going 45 miles an hour. Uh-huh. Like, is she giving him, like, word problems? Is she giving him, like, deep philosophical like questions? Like, LSAT? Like, what's Ooh, happening Okay. The I love this. Yeah, so she comes along. She's like, okay, you know, a, a chariot leaves... Sheba Mm -hmm. at, Mm -hmm. you know, 2.55 p.m. and it's traveling, you know, 20 cubits per second or something (laughs) like Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then this other one, and then he would come back with a, well, whose cubit is this? You know, and he would like know the clever Mm -hmm. answer that's like the nonlinear thinking kind of answer to it. Mm -hmm. Whose cubit is this? Because of my cubit or your cubit? Yeah, because it's based on the, the length of the middle finger to the elbow. Oh, I see. You mean this... Is there not a standard form of cubit at this point? I think by this point they did have some standards for weights, at least. I don't know if they did for lengths, but either way, there were different ones, right? Where, like, different kings would come along and change the amounts of certain measures and weights and things. So I think that was the fun trick question she set up. Where okay. it's, you know, various things like that, where it, you think it's a logic problem, but actually it's that there's some other... Thing of like, oh no, actually, wait a minute. Is this in the cubits of yeah. you know, the Babylonians or of the Israelites or something like that? She'll be like, so what's this rumor I hear about you and cutting babies in half? Although oh. maybe that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't oh, know. Yeah, we haven't heard it in this recap, but. When the Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built and the food of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their clothing, his cupbearers also and their clothing, and his ascent by which he went up to the house of Yahweh, there was no more spirit in her. She said to the king, "'It was a true report that I had heard in my own land of your acts and of your wisdom.'" 
However, I didn't believe their words until I came and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told to me. You exceed the fame that I had heard. Wow. Happy are you men, are your men, and happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be Yahweh your God, who delighted in you to set you on his throne to be king for Yahweh your God, because your God loved Israel to establish them forever. Therefore, made you made he you king over them. <laughs> Because she kind of, <laughs> sorry, that's hard to say. She was drunk at this point. Got it. Right. Okay. Made he. And you that's king. why he. Made he. he you you king. Made the king. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Goodness. Okay. Made he you king uh, over them to do justice and righteousness. She gave the king 120 talents of gold and spices in great abundance and precious stones. Mm. Neither was there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave to Solomon. Yeah, she was a spicy lady. Mm -hmm. The servant. Is this all? Hold on. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm yes. sure we talked about this the first time we encountered this story, but I'm like, is this all a euphemism for them just doing it real good? Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they did it, but I don't know if they did it yet. They must have done it, right? Uh Yeah. What a question. Yeah, is this a euphemism or is this all just foreplay? Mm. You know, is this like the courting process? The classic mm. spice exchange that we all engage in. Well, yeah. I mean, think about the last time you went on a new date with someone, you're courting them, usually on the it's first date. It's been a date. very long time. <laughs> it's also been a long time for me. Well, I'm just saying, like, usually on the first date, they quiz you with some trivia questions, some logic puzzles, some lateral thinking puzzles. <laughs> and then, if you did a good job... What days have you been on? <laughs> they give you some spices. <laughs> and then it's on. Got it. Got it. Okay. As we all know. And then it's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. The servants also of Huram and the servants of Solomon who brought gold from Ophir brought algum trees and precious stones. The king made of the algum trees terraces for the house of Yahweh and for the king's house and harps and psalteries for the singers. Hmm. And there was none such seen before the land of Judah. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba her, all her desire. See? Whatever she asked. See? Hey -oh. He yeah, gave it no, to that her. One's, yeah, he Whatever. gave it to her. Okay. Yeah. Whatever she asked besides that which she had brought to the king. So she turned and went to her own land, she and her servants. Wait. So she was like, bye? Or what mm -hmm. happened? She hit it and quit it. Got it. Okay, thanks. She was good. Now, the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold, besides that which the traders and merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country, country brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made 200 bucklers of beaten gold. Yeah, there they yeah, are. Yeah, there they are. The commemorative shields. Yep. <laughs> 600 shekels of beaten gold went to one buckler. He made 300 shields of beaten gold. 300 shekels of gold went to one shield. Mm. What? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so he made, <sighs> this is the message here. He made 200 body length shields of hammered gold. That's the first ones that Emily oh, wow. read. Wow. Wow. And then 300 small shields, about half that size. So those okay. were the commemorative <laughs> Got bucklers, it. like okay. the participation trophies or something. So, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Okay. Okay, whatever that is. By the, yeah, whatever that is. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory. Jeez, that's awful. Oh. And overlaid it with pure gold. Why would you cover the ivory with gold? I'm like, that's terrible. <laughs> I know. Unless he's actually like, like an inlay, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty horrifying. Is this, uh, like, yeah, that, is this like when it became really popular to like paint your hardwood floors with like gross, stupid paint. I feel like this was a thing. Is that thing a trend? That, that was a trend at some point in like, I don't know what I want to say, like 70s or 80s or something uh, like that. I don't know. I wasn't alive then. I mean, I was in the 80s. <laughs> I mean, but you, sure. You weren't alive in the 70s. <laughs> no. Okay, wait. There's a big typo here. It just says ND. There were six steps. ND. 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 There were six steps to the throne with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne and stays on either side by the place of the seat and two lions standing beside the stays. Okay. 
pretty cool. I think they just, somebody wanted to write this down because it was so epic. It was so yeah. cool what Solomon freaking did here. <laughs> 12 lions stood there on one side and on the other side on the six steps. There was nothing like it made in any kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. Silver was nothing accounted in of the days of Solomon. <laughs> okay, hold on, though. <laughs> but I want to know, how is the everyman living? Uh, probably mm. not not the best, we're, I'm we're assuming. Like, okay, sure, we're saying, this, oh, we're such an abundant nation, and look, you can see, because our king has a fancy throne, I'm like, I don't give a shit. How how is your freaking dirt farmer living? Because mm. like if they're also doing good, then I'm like, okay, cool, great. But if they're not, I'm like, I don't care about your lions and your golden footstool. Well, okay, if you if you keep going, I think one more sentence here because it's clarifying that everything of his was gold, and that like there was no silver stuff in this palace. No, this is like commoner shit. And so maybe it's that. He like gave all the silver to, to all those, you know, pig farmers and whatever. Okay, yeah. For the king had ships that went to Tarshish with the servants of Hurem. Once every three years came the ships of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. Whoa, okay. Whoa. So if, okay. So if the dirt farmers are having like thrones made out of peacocks, then I'm back in. Okay. Dedeker. Thrones made of peacocks, goodness. <laughs> So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Yeah, we, we know. All the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. They brought every man his tribute, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and clothing, armor and spices, horses and mules rate year, a rate year by year. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen. Right. This was the horse thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. This was the thing where when we read this before, we got... We were like, no way. <laughs> well, yeah, first of all, no way. But two, there had just previously been some rule that Yahweh had made about the number oh, of horses, horses that any king right. was allowed to have. And Solomon was way over that number. Too many. Too many horses, too many wives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so 12,000 horsemen that he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. Wait, the king at Jerusalem? Like there's a different king? Or is do they mean he's Or the is king? he talking about himself? I don't know. Is that him? Oh, well, wait, wait. Look, he ruled over all the kings from river, from the river even to the land of the Philistines into the border of Egypt. I so see. there are other kings, but he is the king. He's sort of a king of kings. Yeah. King of kings, yeah. The king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones, and cedars made he to be at the, as the sycamore trees that are <laughs> in the lowland. Sorry. Oh, wow. Okay. It's Hold a lot on. here for abundance. Right. So, sorry. He made silver... <sighs> Like stones. To be in Jerusalem as stones and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the lowland for abundance. Okay, so like silver was as common as stones and cedars were as common as Sycamore? sycamores, which I guess were common. <laughs> so, sure. okay. I'll Everyone, take your word for it. It sounds like everybody's doing great, right? Everybody's got silver, yeah. everybody's got cedars. Everyone's yeah. smelling great. The spiders don't like cedar, so a lot oh, fewer yeah. spiders for everyone. Mm, that's good. Yeah, this is a great time. This is a great time to be in the kingdom. They brought horses for Solomon out of Egypt and out of all the lands. This guy really liked horses. Now, the rest of the acts of Solomon first and last, aren't they written in the history of Nathan the prophet? And in the oh, prophecy... Oh, twist. I know. That's very... <laughs> Dedeker is like, I don't know. And in the prophecy of Elisha, the Shilonite. Nope, nope, try that again. Uh, Ahijah, Ahijah, the yeah. Sh Shilonite. And in the visions of Edo, the seer concerning Jeroboam, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel 40 years. Wow. Solomon slept with his fathers and he was buried in the city oh. of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his place. He died oh. already? Okay. Yeah, that's it. I guess he's dead. Jeez. We didn't I thought get that... the baby story? No. I guess we got it once and that was enough. It wasn't even like a big deal. It just was like, don't rip the baby in half, I guess. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, not a big deal. Yeah. Everyone no knows deal. that. Yeah. I mean, now they do. Um, interesting. Interesting. I love that when we were reading Kings, the recurring theme was, and as for whatever, isn't that also written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel and Judah or whatever? And now we're in Chronicles, which technically is a different Chronicles. Yes, we know that. But is now it? we're in Chronicles. Oh, yeah, it and it says, but all those things, aren't they written in the books of Nathan and Ahijah and Edo and like these other yeah, books? that is pretty funny. Pretty funny. It's like when you're looking up references for like research studies and one study cites another and that one actually cited another one for that research and actually another one cited another for some like statistic everyone whips out. And then you realize that Someone originally just made it up. Yeah. Everyone just kept copying them and no one actually knows the truth. Yeah. Ah, good times. Okay. Before we go on to Second Chronicles chapter 10, we're going to take a quick break to talk about how you can support this show if you're having a great time and you want to ensure that someday all of these DBS plus versions of all of these books become a reality. I mean, who wouldn't want to see Michael B. Jordan? in the, the show about Solomon. And the way that I you do. can make that happen... Yeah, I do. The way you can make that happen is by going to patreon.com slash study and contributing there. That'll go a long way to paying Michael B. Jordan's enormous salary, <laughs> uh, as well as Angela Bassett's for that matter. And of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Thank you for being such a friend of the show. But also, uh, whether you're a patron or not, we would love it if you could also uh, take some time to share this with your friends. Write some reviews online. Post about it on social media. Talk about how this is the best Bible podcast that has ever been made. Or, you know, put it in your own words, of course. But that would really go a long way to help us out. And if you do become a patron... As a thank you, we have things like personal toasts on the show, early releases of episodes, and Emily's drink recipes, so many wonderful things, and also, of course, our undying love. And we're back, and it is time for chapter 10, Second Chronicles. Yes, it is. Solomon's dead. He did. Yeah, I was not so, expecting that our time with Solomon would be so short. No, I'm kind of sad about that. Yeah. Yeah. Did we ever cast Rehoboam? <laughs> uh, let's see. Probably. Uh, Rehoboam. We didn't, so I have a suspicion we're not going to have a lot of time with Rehoboam. Really? Either. Yes. <laughs> we're going to have well, at least two chapters. Mm, I see. Yeah, okay, I, but I suspect he's going to die soon. He probably died so quickly that we were like, nah, it's not even worth it to cast him. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm looking. I'm looking up a little bit because I know we spent a lot of time trying to figure out the chronology of the kings because we're about to split into Israel and Judah being separate kingdoms. And it's been a while since we've been here, but it seems like that's what happens during Rehoboam. So he was king for a while, but the kingdom also became divided during his time. So, so okay. Let's see what happens here. Well, we can think about it. Yeah, we can think about it. Okay. Yeah. Someone cool though. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. Someone yeah. could be someone cool. Definitely. Okay. Chapter 10. Rehoboam went to Shech- Shechem, Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. It happened when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was in Egypt where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon. Oh. Oh, boy. Interesting. Plot twist. That Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. They sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all Israel came, and they spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke grievous. Now, therefore, make you the grievous service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter, and we will serve you. So I guess some some people did not like Solomon very much. Mm. And so they said, Make our yoke lighter and we'll serve you. He said to them, Come again to me after three days. The people departed. King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon, his father, while yet he lived, saying, What counsel can you give me to return answer to this people? They spoke to him, saying, If you are kind to this people and please them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But 
he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him. Uh-oh, he's going to be a real jerk. Yeah, Yeek. and took counsel with the young men who had uh, grown up with him. All his D-bag friends. Wow, oh, I see, yeah. I see. Yeah, got it. With all the young men who had grown up with him who stood before him. He said to them, what counsel give you that we may return to answer to this people who have spoken to me saying, make the yoke that your father did put on us lighter. The young men who had grown up with him spoke to him saying, Thus shall you tell the people who spoke to you, saying, your father made our yoke heavy, but make you it lighter to us. Make you it lighter to us. Who wrote this? They were also drunk. All our our base are belonging to us. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Thus shall you say to them, my little finger is thicker than my father's loins. Oh, um, we've, yep. we've we've encountered this before. I remember wow. this. Yeah. Wow, I remember this. Yeah, talk about a physical contest. A burn, jeez. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, whereas my father did lay to you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. <laughs> They were drunk. They were for certain drunk. For sure drunk. Okay. (laughs) Jeez. I don't know about this guy. I don't know. So, and that was from his friends. They're they're like, you tell them this. Okay. They're like, it'll be so funny. Uh, Just wait till you see their faces. So, Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king bade, saying, come to me again the third day. The king answered them roughly. And King Rehoboam forsook the counsel of old men and spoke to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add thereto. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. (laughs) Then he's like, it sounded better when I was drunk with all my bros. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to work out if there's some way we can add a reference to the Scorpion King starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. To this, wow. We'll have to, we'll have to workshop some way to include that in here. That would be funny. Like Yahweh just like comes into the camera and like winks at everyone. Like when Scorpions comes in. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Just a quick little cut to the Scorpion King and his like weird video game looking CG, and he just kind of winks at the camera real quick. (laughs) Exactly. Yikes. So (laughs) the king didn't listen to the people, for it was brought about of God that Yahweh might establish His word which he spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. When all Israel saw that the king didn't listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents, Israel. Now see to your own house, David. So all Israel departed to their tents. But as for the children of Israel who lived in the city of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Oh, I see. This is the split, I guess. So Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Mm. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadaram, who was over the men subjected to forced labor. And the children of Israel stoned him to death with stones. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. An old classic. Wait. Yeah, I love that. Jeez. That's Hadaram, not King, not Rehoboam. Did, oh, okay. Okay. But okay. What did Hadaram do? What did Hadaram do? Yeah, I what did he lost. do? I tuned out for two seconds and we're stoning people. He was put over the men subjected to forced labor. So he's like a slave master. So I don't feel so bad about this, I guess. Okay, okay. King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David to this day. Got it. Whoa. (laughs) To this day, still going on apparently. So there was an uprising. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But isn't... And that's it for chapter 10. Jesus from Jesse's line, the crown of David of Rehoboam. <laughs> mm. I want to know which side this is on. Well, I guess it's got to be on Mary's side, right? Uh, no, I think it's on Joseph's side, right? Uh, I thought that was Mary's because side. Because we, we're, we're patrilineal, but we're patrilineal. We're... But I thought Dedeker Joseph was the stepdad. <laughs> well, right? yes. I thought God was the dad dad. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking this up, Chase? Yeah, I'll see what I can find here. Boy, okay, the tree of Jesse, the genealogy of Jesus. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. So David and Bathsheba. 
gave birth to Solomon and then Rehoboam and then on and on and on and on and on uh, to Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. But I, didn't we determine when we looked into this before that there's also like Mary's somehow in the genealogy too? Like there was sort of a weird... I wouldn't be surprised. Thing about that? I would not be surprised. Yes. It's that Mary is a descendant of David's son, Nathan. And oh. Joseph was a descendant of Solomon. So both of them were from that line, technically. Wait, that's awkward. But who inherited the big genitals? Right. Although he's saying that his father didn't have them, so it might skip generations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Is that how okay. it works? I, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't You're not going to ask your dad? Uh-huh. I mean, I'd have to ask also my grandpa, but he's no longer with us. And, uh-huh. and I'd have to have a kid and ask him. So, you know, it's just, there's a lot of work yeah, involved here. a lot here. of work involved. Yeah. Okay, chapter 11. When Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled the house of Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors to fight against Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. I see there's kind of like a civil war going on, mm. maybe a coup happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But the word of Yahweh came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, Thus says Yahweh, You shall not go up, nor fight against your brothers. Return mm. every man to his house, for this thing is of me. <laughs> so they listened to the words of Yahweh and returned from going against Jeroboam. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. Hmm. Oh, I guess he's making lemonade, like, lemonade out of lemons. He built Bethlehem <laughs> and Etam and Tekoa, Beth Zur and Soko and Adullam and Gath and Marasha and Ziph and Adoraim and Lachish and Azekah and Zorah and Daijalon and Hebron, which are in Judah and in Benjamin, fortified wow. cities. Mm. He fortified the strongholds and put captains in them and stores of food and oil and wine. Now, now Eugene says he beefed up the fortifications, <laughs> which sure is pretty did. good. That's nice of him. Yeah. I'm sure he did. Nice. Yeah. In every Thank city, him. he put shields and spears and made them exceeding strong. Judah and Benjamin belonged to him. The priests and the Levites who were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their border. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons cast them off, that they should not execute the priest's office to Yahweh. Oh. And he appointed him priests for the high places. That's a big deal, actually. I, yeah. I forgot about this. But yeah, he like didn't have the Levites be the priests. He appointed his own. Interesting. That was Jeroboam, not Rehoboam, though. Okay, okay. I see this bad boy young friend's Jeroboam. Right, okay. Okay. Got it. And he's a friend of Rehoboam? Yeah, who is Jeroboam? Yeah, who is... Yeah, Je- this is question. like a Jeopardy question. <laughs> <laughs> but really. Uh, let's see here. Jeroboam was the first king of the kingdom of Israel when they split. I okay. see, okay. So he, yeah, I guess so he's the one who... Wait, was Rehoboam the one who's the son of Solomon? Re- yeah, Rehoboam no. is the son of Solomon. Okay, so then Jeroboam, who's he related to? He was the son. Oh, he was the son of Nebat, who's who was one of the seers, I guess, like one of the prophets or something. And his mother How did was. This guy gets to be a, a big dude on campus. Is he the king, or what is he doing? So uh, when he was a young man, Solomon made him superintendent over his tribesmen in the building of fortresses in Jerusalem. Okay. So I guess he was in some kind of influential role, and so I guess maybe the deal is that Jeroboam kind of had more of like the people's support and that he, you know, still had the Israelites work for him and they all liked him. Okay. But Rehoboam kicked all the Israelites out and, or kicked all the Levites out and said, no, I'm going to have my own priests. Yeah. Does that track? Yes, sure. it tracks because as it continues, so Rehoboam appointed him priests for the high places. So he okay. took all the Levites Got and it. for the male okay. goats and for the calves, which he had made. After them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek Yahweh, the God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to Yahweh, the God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong three years. For they walked three years in the way of David and Solomon. Hmm. 
Rehoboam took him a wife, Mahalath, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, and of Abihail. Which is like daughter- his cousin? Yeah, well, you know, that's that's been a tradition the world over okay, among royals. I won't get so surprised by this, okay. And of Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse, and she bore him sons, Jeush and Shemariah and <laughs> Zaham. After her, he took Maka, the daughter of Absalom, and she bore him Abijah and Atai and Ziza and Shalemeth. Mm. Rehoboam loved Maka, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his oh. concubines, for he took 18 wives and 60 concubines and became the father of 28 sons and 60 daughters. Good Lord. Wow. I, I was just... <laughs> I was just realizing. Just, I'm sorry, but like polysaturation is apparently not a thing. No, this is this well, is just, Solomon had like 300. So. Yeah, Solomon had many more. This is also just this mate is, hoarding. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. I was also thinking that that song Royals could have really missed out on some lyrics. You know, like we will never be royals. We won't marry our cousins. Baby, I'll rule. I'll rule. I'll rule. That's true. I'll Yeah. I think it'd be pretty good. I like it. Lord. Rehoboam (laughs) appointed Abijah, the son of Makkah, to be chief, even the prince among his brothers, for he was minded to make him king. He dealt wisely and dispersed of all his sons throughout all the lands of Judah and Benjamin to every fortified city, and he gave them food in abundance. He sought for them many wives. That's nice of him. That's it. That's the end. That's you got the them wives too. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, many, That's many cool. wives. Yeah. Many How did he wives. Yeah. do that? Yeah. I guess he just was like, who wants to be my son's who wife? Wants, who wants one? Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I got 28 of them. <sighs> yeah. And with that, it is time for some wisdom from the book of Proverbs, chapter 12. Chapter 12. Whoever loves correction loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. (laughs) Okay, just come right out and say it. That's good. A good man shall obtain favor from Yahweh, but he will condemn a man of wicked plans. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A worthy woman is the crown of her husband, but a disgraceful wife is as rottenness in his bones. Ew. Rottenness in his bones. Rottenness. Rottenness. The thoughts of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked are about lying in wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be condemned according to his wisdom, but he who has a warped mind shall be despised. Better is he who is little known and has a servant than he who honors himself and lacks bread. Okay, hold on. So like, yeah, better to be rich rather than famous instead of being famous and not, no money? I don't know. No bread? Wait. Wait. Yeah, which wait, which is it? Which is the better one? Yeah, it's it's better if no one knows anything about you, but you're you're still rich enough to afford a servant, rather than everyone knows your name because you did some embarrassing thing that went viral on YouTube, mm. and, and you broke. don't have any money. I guess. Yes. Interesting. Okay, you heard it here, folks. Mm-hmm. A righteous man respects the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. I don't know if those two have anything to do with one another, but sure. I guess, sure. He who tills his land shall have plenty of bread, but he who chases fantasies is void of understanding. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The wicked Mm -hmm. desires the plunder of evil men, but the root of the righteous flourishes. An evil man is trapped by sinfulness of lips, but the righteous shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, the work of a man's hand shall be rewarded to him. Okay, so that's like if you work hard, then it's yeah. going to pay off, which is not always the truth. Well, they like to say that mm-hmm. in self-help books. Mm-hmm. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who is wise listens to counsel. 
A fool shows his annoyance the same day, but one who overlooks an insult is prudent. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Clever, clever. Okay. He who is truthful testifies honestly, but a false witness lies. That's good, yeah. So someone who's truthful tells the truth, (laughs) but someone... Who, who lies, lies tells lies. lies. Awful. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Such wisdom. <laughs> there is one who speaks rashly like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise heals. <laughs> Truth's lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only momentary. Hmm. Deceit is in the heart of those who plot evil, but joy comes to the promoters of peace. No mischief shall happen to the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Again, it's not true. It's not true. Yeah. And there's other verses that directly contradict this. Yes. Where it's oh, like the wicked get cool like, shit and the righteous don't. Like, yeah. It's like this book. <laughs> this whole book. No mischief shall happen. Oh, yes. But the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an, an abomination to Yahweh, but those who do the truth are his delight. A prudent man keeps his knowledge, but the hearts of fools proclaim foolishness. The hands of the diligent one shall rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. Jeez, I'm sorry, what? how exactly? I don't know. I don't know. Laziness ends, ends in, in slave, slave labor. labor. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a kind word makes it glad. Oh. I mean, that's nice. That's that's cute. Yeah. A righteous person is cautious. Ca- Let me say that again. <laughs> a righteous person is cautious in friendship, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The slothful man doesn't roast his game. But the possessions of his of diligent men are prized. Wait, what? 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 Is this? <laughs> what? Hang on. What are we even talking about? I love here? this. Yeah. Rocking on in the chat is like, I think the chat GPT went back in time to read the Bible. <laughs> that, the uh, thing is, we tested this last time yes. and chat GPT actually makes more coherent more proper. Yeah, I think it would be better than this, quite so frankly. Yeah. Up, but like, yeah. The, the, the slothful, slothful man, man does not roast his game. So he's like too lazy. He shoots his game. Yeah. And, he's and like, then oh, he's like, I'm going to eat it raw. It. I'm just going to eat it raw. But the possessions of a of diligent, diligent men, men are prized. Are prized. Cool. Okay, yeah, one more. Okay. One, we're almost there. Uh, I'm, I'm yes. sorry. I'm looking okay. at some other translations because I just want to uh, understand here. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm like, we're so one sorry. verse away, Jace. I know. That's why I will do this right now. The NIV says, The lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. But it does have a footnote on the word roast, and it says the meaning of the Hebrew word is uncertain. Oh, okay. So they're like, <laughs> okay. they have no idea. Yeah. They, no one has any idea. Cool. Right. In the way of righteousness is life. In its path, there is no death. That's also bullshit. The way of <laughs> righteousness, on the way of righteousness is life. In its path, there is no death. In its path, meaning like in life's path or in righteousness's I guess. path? I I don't know. Or it's like if if righteousness is life, then is death not or then is its path not death? It's like a logic problem on an SAT or something. No, I hate it. I hate it. More cowbell. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, that's it. We're we're wow. good. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. All right. We did it. We read some proverbs. Hey, we have a toast though. Oh, we have a oh, toast. Wow. I love yeah. that. That's okay. so cool. cool. I so love that for raise us. a glass. We have our new parishioner, Judy. Woo! <laughs> Judy, thank wow. you so much. Judy. Thank you. Judy. I don't know how we would do it without you. This is hard, thankless labor. <laughs> I mean, I and don't your know. Your contribution makes a difference. It's very, it's very encouraging. Thank you so much, Judy. And thank you, Dedeker. Mm. Thank you. For what? Because you said it was thankless labor, so I'm thanking oh, you. Oh, oh, thank you. That's cute. Thank you, oh. Jace. Oh, Samantha thank Wallace you, in the chat is thanking us too. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Thank you, everyone. Wow. Thank, thank you, Rockin' thank, On. And Rockin' On, thank you. Wow. And thank you, Emily. Thank you, Dedeker. Thank, thank you. Let's just all thank each other. Thank and you all thank for you. being here. Thank you all. <laughs> 
for joining us for Bible study today. If you want to join the audience in our live stream shows, follow us on Twitch at Drunk Bible Study or go to drunkbiblestudy.com slash live. If you want even more Drunk Bible Study, including early releases, cocktail recipes, personal toasts on the show, and more, become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash drunkbiblestudy. If you enjoy the show, take a moment to subscribe and write us a nice little review on iTunes, letting other people know what you like about it. You can also join fellow listeners in the Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship Facebook group or on our Discord server at discord.drunkbiblestudy.com. Follow us on Twitter at Drunk Bible Cast, on Instagram at Drunk Bible Study, or send us an email to info at drunkbiblestudy.com. Drunk Bible Study is created and produced by Jason Lindgren, Dedeker Winston, and me, Emily Matlack. Our theme song is Book Club by Josh and Anand from their album, Home of the, the, the. For more information, visit us at drunkbiblestudy.com. I made a memory about your dad.